Greetings fellow drone fanatics. Today we're going to show you a quick video on how to calculate the required trust for your drone, especially if you're building your own drone. This is very useful. We found a lot of information. We know that there's a lot of complicated calculations, but this is just like a general and easy to follow guide to give you a more or less idea or feeling of what type of motor you would require in order to have your drone fly perfectly and safely. The first thing that you need to know is that you must be very aware of what use you intend for your drone. And depending on the use, you will also be selecting different accessories, electronics, batteries, frame, and so on. So make sure that you know what you intend to use to your drone. And once you know that, just add all the weight of every single item that it will be on that drone. Be very aware that you also have to include the motor's weight. So if you more or less have an idea of what motor you want, you can use a ballpark value of 50 grams, which is more or less what a, a good motor will weigh. So take that into consideration. Now, once you have all of that weight added, it is recommended that you use a power to weight ratio of two to one meaning that for each one gram of weight of your drone, you will need two grams of trust. And this is because if you use a one-to-one -one weight ratio, you will not be able to take off. Your drone will only be able to, to hover, and this is very risky. You must also include a safety factor of 20%, or at least 20%, uh, in case there are adverse weather conditions, and this is just a safe, safe guide. Uh, because you can increase that value it depends on where you will be flying your drone. If it's very windy, we recommend you to increase that safety factor. If you're going to be flying nearby buildings, it's definitely worth in increasing it a little bit more because you want a better response from your drone. Now, be very aware that many motor fact, uh, fab, uh, uh, builders will actually provide you with a table on which you will get information for the type of motor you're looking, the volts, and also the type of propeller that you can run on that motor. And based on the prop setting or size, you will notice that you have different trust ratios, and that's very important, and you will see why it is so later. So let's do a quick calculation and example. So you have your drone. You added all of your weight, and it's about 1,400 grams or 1.4 kilograms. So if you're going to use a power to weight ratio, your required total trust must be of 2,800 grams. Now, let's include the safety factor of 20%, and that will give us 3,360 grams. So if you're planning on using it on a quadcopter, then you have to divide this total weight by four, since it's four motors that will be powering the quadcopter. If it's an exacopter, you divide it by six. So in this case, we're using a quadcopter, and it's 3,360 grams divided by 4. So that means that we need at least a MT2216 motor running on a tree cell battery, which is 11.1 .1 volts, and with a 12-inch prop. So that gives us a trust of 920. It's a little bit over, but if you take a look at the next prop setting, we only get 720 grams, so we will be short. And this is very important. Since you want to hover at 50% throttle, I'm sorry, you can see that the 12 inches prop at 50% provides exactly 420 grams of trust, which is half of what you need for your drone. So this is the motor that you need, and this is the prop configuration that you must have. You can see that the most efficient uh, uh, grams per weight trust is obtained at actually, for what, sorry, is obtained at 50%. So this is why you will choose this motor. If you chose the other one, the smaller, I mean the smaller prop, you will notice that you will be in trouble. Because at 50%, you will not be able to hover. Uh, your drone will be falling off slowly, so you will need to increase throttle until 65, maybe 70 percent just to throttle, and that's consuming a lot of power from your batteries, so your flights will be really short. Also, be very aware that when you're 
if you have an underpowered drone, uh, you can crash. And that's because the computer, or the flight computer, plays with the torque and the thrust on each of the four motors in order to give you direction. So if you move your control stick forward, what it will do, it will slow the power of the front motors and increase the one on the back motors. But if you're already on the limit of your power, the computer will try to increase your banking angle or your pitch, I'm sorry, uh, a little bit more. And since it wants to attain that desired angle, you're pushing your throttle, it will slow down the front propellers. But if you do not have enough thrust from your rear motors, your drone will start to gradually fall as it tries to compensate for increasing speed. Uh, this is called the transition flight. You will notice that on the helicopters. It's the same with drones. So that's why you always have to have enough power. If you don't have it, your drone will just go increasing its pitch and it will start to fall downward to, towards the, the, the land or the, 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 the earth. So pretty much you will crash right front end. Instead of just falling, you will just start to crash like straight to the, to the, the, the ground. So we hope you guys enjoyed this video. Uh, if you have any questions or comments, feel free to, to post your comments on YouTube. You can also follow us on our official website. Uh, the link is provided in the description. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel, and thanks for watching. Have a great day.